What's up guys, Garrett with self.dev. We are back doing another LinkedIn assessment for you. Today we are gonna try and do the bash LinkedIn assessment. I know the basics of how to navigate the command line and how to do like a for loop in bash. That's about it. So there's a really high chance we're gonna fail this one. What else? You're probably gonna get different questions when you take this. They usually have like a bank of questions. They'll just pull like 15 random ones. So probably gonna get different questions. The questions are gonna be time stamped in the description. So if you wanna look in the description, you can kind of jump to each individual question. So let's do this. All right, which of the three methods will copy the directory named photo dar recursively from the user's home directory to backups? I think it's number one, because that has the tilde inside, and I think that's how the file path is. Oh wait, I gotta read the questions, duh. All right, so none of the three methods will expand the user's home directory using only that will be successful. So, wait, are these two separate arguments? I don't understand this tilde thing now. Dang it. All right, we're gonna go with number one. Well, hopefully that's it. All right, so if script.sh is run in the current directory, why will it fail? Um, ls-l, is that an L or a one? That looks like a one, ls-1. That's a one. Cat scripts.sh for I in that thing. Do this. Done. All right. Those have scroll bars. That's really weird. I feel like they should have just made those wrap around. All right. Why will it fail? Cannot access non existent file. I don't think curly brackets are a special character in Bash. That doesn't sound right. I think it's this one here because the longest answer is usually the correct one. And this is the longest answer. Running script.sh will be successful as the ls command builds a list of files in the current directory and loops through that list. Yeah, trick question. It's going to be successful. All right, to run a copy command in subshell, which syntax would you use? Well, let's just ask our good friend Google here. All right, well, these guys are using parentheses, so that's what we're going to go with here. The one with parentheses. All right, using awk, what would the output of this command string be? Why well, is there an awkward command? No, I'm just kidding. It's not an awkward command. Uh, echo one, two, three, pipe to AWK, and then do some stuff. I is less than NF. What, what, what is NF? Is that the input maybe? S equals S plus. So it's doing a for loop. So I'm assuming it's gonna loop through one, two, and three. I've heard those side by side. So it, it would be like a, I don't see what math they could use to get to 600 because you'd have to add three, two, and one together and then add two zeros to the end. And that doesn't look like they're doing that here. I'm gonna go with this one here because you're doing S equals S plus the number. So it'd be six, not one, two, three. Ah, damn it. All right, the command below will search the root file systems for, ah, it was the one, two, three. Okay, the command below will search the root file system for files named finance.db. In this context, what information is being sent to dev null? Find slash name, finance DB one result text to dev null. The name of the files that do not match finance db. Information sent to the standard error, for example, errors that have, we're gonna go with, it's not C, because the names that match would go to results.txt. So I think it'd be the names of the files that do not match. But then why would that find, why would find get files that don't match this? All right, the, to permanently remove empty lines from a file called text file, what command would you use? I know you want attention, so you'd have to do some regex. Ugh, I hate regex, dude. Who actually knows that? You just look it up whenever you need it. Cat. Okay, so why would you want to output the text file? Okay, and then you pipe it to that, right? But that is different from these other three, so we're going to assume that one's wrong. Uh, I think it's either A or D. What regex is correct? This one, it's this one, okay? So I don't know anything, I don't know what's going on here, right? This is how I came to the conclusion that A is the right answer. One, this one is not it because it's different from these three answers, okay? Uh, this one is not it because it doesn't have the dash I flag and they're trying to trick you. And then this one's not it because this regex is different from the other three regexes here. So by process of elim elimination, we get A as being the correct answer. If that's right, let me know in the comments below because that'll be awesome. All right, assuming that user one existed, what would the result of this command string, command string? What would be the result of this command string? There we go. AWK, what does AWK do? Doesn't say. All right, anyway, back to this thing. All right, so we're gonna use the same process of elimination stuff we did last time. It's not colons, so that's right. I mean, that's, that's out of there. 
because obviously these are hyphens, right? So it's one of these three answers. All right, I think it's either C or D. We're gonna go with C. All right, so what happens if you use set dash E in bash script? I don't know, let's find out real quick here. Set dash E. What does set dash X do in bash script? Uh, has help set says, print commands and their arguments as they are executed. It will cause bash to exit. No, it will cause, all right, apparently it is. it does cause bash to exit. Um, is X different from E? I thought it was like a variable. No, it's a flag, all right. Wait, what if we do bash and then we do set? Actually, we do man set. Is it set man? I thought, huh, well, never mind. I thought the man would basically like print the manual. It does it when I run run that in like Mint or Kali Linux. Huh, oh well. Uh, we're going to go with C here again because we don't know the answer and we're out of time. So the blank keyword pauses the script to get input from standard input. Pause script to get standard input. All right, let's see, what do we do here? Uh, we do read, okay? I'm gonna go with that, So that's because that's an answer here. So, there we go. In file.sql, oh, if file.sql holds SQL statements to be executed, what will be in the file.txt after this command is run? Okay, so I feel like it's gonna be the non-error output. Oh wait, no, it'd be the error output. I think that's probably it. All right, how does the SUID or set UID bit affect executable commands? No idea. So the command creates files. They will be owned by the group owner of the command. I don't think that's it. The suid bit allows anyone to execute the command no matter what permissions are set. Is that like sudo? Because if it's like sudo, then that's it. What, oh, when the command is executed, it's running privileges elevate to the user own to the user owner of that command. We just need to Google SUID real quick. There we go. It gave us temporary permissions to users to run a program. Okay, so it's gonna be this one here. All right. So the owner. Oh, the in order to extract text from the first column of a file called text file, which command would you use? D. You don't get my rationale behind that, it's just what I think is the correct answer. So, what is the keyboard shortcut that calls up bash history search as shown below? Ooh, that's cool. Uh, let's see, bash history. All right, recall the last command matching the characters you provide. Which one is it? Control, okay, so we got R, H, R, okay. Okay, it's, it's control R. We can test that real quick too, right? So we can do control R. Yeah, cool. All right, there we go. Which algorithmic expression will give the most precise answer? Ah, that sounds like a math question. Bar equals dollar sign. I have no idea. And I don't know how I would Google this right now, but this looks like it's the most explicit, so we're gonna go with that. What is the result of this script? txt equals penguins, text, some stuff, regex, echo, dollar sign. Okay, well zero does not represent true. Wait, what? What is going on? I thought zero was false and one was true. Does that change in bash or is my understanding that I've just been wrong the entire time I've been a developer? Oh, I've never had to mess with ones and zeros much though, so I guess it could be. One representing true because the text, the variable text contains eight letters, one representing false because the variable text is longer than eight characters. It's not longer than eight, eight characters. It is eight characters though. Uh, it's, it's, it's B because everybody loves penguins. Oh, one representing false because the variable text does not contain eight letters, lowercase. Ah, oh yeah. I didn't think about case sensitive, sensitivity, but P-E-N-G-U-I-N-S. That's eight characters, so we're gonna go with D. Ah, we didn't pass. Well, we weren't expecting to pass. Again, this was just so you can get an idea of what the questions were like. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, I have a Discord if you want to come ask questions in there. That's in the description. I do resume reviews and portfolio reviews for front-end developers. If you want to send me an email with your portfolio slash resume, it's in the description. And uh, what else? I think that's it. So I will see you next time. Peace. Round one.